Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eliana Aaron, Director of EMA Care. Today we're going to talk about uh, appropriate mask use and also some of the understanding and reasoning behind wearing a mask properly. We're also going to talk about some of the common mistakes uh, that people have and, and uh, employ when using masks. So first of all, I'm going to introduce you to my mask. Okay, so um, you can use obviously non-surgical uh, masks. These are surgical masks, so they're already pre-made. Um, I find them easier at this point. There's no shortage, so it's pretty easy to get. They're not terribly expensive, although I have to say they were a lot cheaper before coronavirus started. Um, but the same principles apply to this mask that apply to washable uh, masks that you may have in your home. I'm going to talk about some of those differences a little later. So first of all, um, when you have a mask, the folds should be facing down. Okay, this particular mask has um, has a brand name printed onto it, so I know that that's the right way out. Um, the masks that have blue, the blue needs to be on the outside. Okay, a lot of people wear it reversed and that's incorrect. Okay, so those are some of the things to know. On the top of a surgical mask, you'll feel there's a wire, okay? And that wire indicates that it belongs on your nose uh, in order to mold appropriately to your face. So um, masks either have ear straps or they have straps that go behind your head. Um, both of those are acceptable. The N95 masks all have straps that go behind the head. That provides a better seal. But for the purpose of um, people who are not working in medical settings, having straps around your ears is perfectly fine. So um, when you have your mask uh, on correctly, um, again, the folds will be down and you're going to place it, let's, this is a new mask, so we're gonna place this over the nose and mouth. Okay, I have glasses, so I lift up my glasses slightly, and I put this on, and I wrap it behind my ears, and I pull the chin piece below, below my chin. Okay, so you can see here that it's below my chin, and this is uh, above where my eyeglasses are. Um, but obviously below my eyes, giving me adequate room to breathe. I don't actually find that this clouds up my glasses too much, but there are tricks that you could find on Google for uh, preventing your glasses from clouding up. Um, one of the mistakes that I see a lot of people making is wearing their mask like this. I'm sure you've seen people like this. Now, the problem with wearing your mask below your nose is that between 95, between, sorry, excuse me, between 90 and 95% of the time, people who are talking are actually breathing through their nose and mouth together, whether they're trying to or not. So with the exception of somebody who actually, you know, pinches their nose and prevents any air from coming out, air actually does come out when you're exhaling through both your nose and your mouth without you realizing it. If you want to test it out, you could go ahead and put your finger under your nose and you will feel that there's, when you talk or when you breathe, that there's a, um, so now I'm cleaning my hands because I touched my face. Um, you're gonna feel that there is um, air coming out and air is particles. That's how particles travel, they travel through air. So wearing a mask below your nose and everyone says, oh, it's so much easier to breathe this way. Well, that's not the point of the mask. The point of the mask is to protect you and to protect others. So wearing the mask correctly, covering the nose, and of course you pitch the top to mold it to your face. Now it looks like it's loose here on the sides, but if you look carefully, it actually is not. The ear, the ear pieces will pull the sides a little bit up but it's actually sealed very well around my cheeks and under my chin. So it looks here loose, but it's actually here smooth against my chin. 
this is what we're looking for in terms of a mask, that it should be actually um, snug against your face. And even if the edges appear not to be, you can tell when, when it is actually fitting and snug. If you've noticed, um, what I do when I touch a mask is I don't touch here. A lot of people, and I'm gonna show this as a demonstration, I'm obviously you know, not in public right now and this is a clean mask, a lot of people will constantly like fiddle with their mask and touch their mask. It's another common mistake. This part of your mask is not clean. The part of your mask that's clean is the part that you're breathing in, which is the inner part. So when I adjust my mask, I'm only adjusting it through the edges, pinching the nose, adjusting it here and here. And if I need to move it, I will go ahead and move it from the inside or from the ear pieces. So let's say I'm eating, I will go ahead and take the mask off or I will attach it a little differently. Um, but I'm not going to touch the outside of my mask because that's not clean. Okay. When I come home from going shopping, I have a mask on. Okay. Sorry. Got to get it back on. I have my mask on. I will, and I have gloves on. Okay. Cause usually, you know, I'm holding groceries, whatever I have gloves on or I'm getting into my car after going shopping and I, I have gloves on when I go shopping. So what do you do? So what I normally will do is I now have my gloves on, I have my mask on, what do I take off first, what do I do? This is very common. Uh, medical people generally um, know the order of what to do, but the average person doesn't. So you need to, you know, we have to learn this. So I know that this has touched the cart and the food and all the money, the credit cards and all these other things. So this is not clean. What I do know is clean, hopefully, is the inside of my mask, right? So I don't wanna to touch that with my dirty gloves. I don't wanna really touch my mask with my dirty gloves at all. So what I wanna do is go ahead and I'm getting into my car. I take off my gloves, okay? And you always take off your gloves by flipping them reversed, okay? And then taking them off and then taking the other one and flipping it. See how I'm doing that? Flipping it inside out. So now my gloves, the inside part of my gloves that was touching my skin is now here, okay? So when I handle this, I'm handling the clean part and then I'm immediately sanitizing my hands because when you take gloves off, you have to sanitize your hands. Once my hands are sanitized, I will go ahead, sorry, I'm just sanitizing. I will go ahead and remove my mask. Again, from the ears, I will remove my mask because this part is not where the breathing happens. So those are some of the tricks that you need to know. A lot of people have a misperception. Oh, but I never breathe through my nose. It's actually not true. The human being is uh, by birth um, naturally a nose breather. If you think about infants, infants are required to breathe by nose or they can't live because when they're eating, they can only breathe through their nose. The reason why babies cry, besides being in pain or something, is because um, when their nose is stuffed, they can't breathe through their nose and only through crying can they breathe through their mouth. So when a baby is crying and they have nasal congestion, one of the first things we tell people is decongest the baby's nose so that they have another option for breathing. Okay. Another common mistake that I see, and it's harder to show in this particular mask because the mask is a nice size here, is when people have a mask on that's not covering their whole chin. I'm sure you've seen this. It could be they're wearing a pediatric mask. It could be that they are, um, you know, that they have a beard and they don't know how to put it here and it's awkward. Um, whatever the reason is, they are not wearing their mask correctly and that's one of the other mistakes. Um, another, so we talked about the gaps on the side. If you actually have big gaps on the side, that's another problem. Um, another issue that I see a lot is when people have a mask on and the mask is covering just the very tip of their nose. Okay. So it's not really covering the bridge. 
it's covering just the tip. And I've even seen it like, like this, okay? This is not really helping because first of all, you can't, you can't close the gap here by your nose, first of all. And second of all, um, it's, the air is totally escaping. And the way that air moves when it leaves your nose or your mouth is it doesn't just go in a nice little direction, it actually sprays. So if you have your nose partially uncovered, then the spray is just gonna get out and you're not really helping. Plus, if some people are around you sneezing or coughing, that's just gonna, those droplets are gonna go straight into your face. So we're trying to protect in, sorry, excuse me, in both directions. Um, this is another one I like. I'm wearing a mask. Now, the only people who could wear a mask like this legitimately are people with a tracheostomy. Since most of us don't have a tracheostomy and we actually do breathe through our mouth and nose, this is not acceptable. The only way this is acceptable is if you are actively eating or drinking, okay? And then you could eat and drink, and then you put the mask back on in the proper way, okay? I see that a lot, actually. So, you know, and, and it makes me crazy. Well, I'm wearing a mask. This is not wearing a mask. This is wearing a necklace, earrings, not a mask. A mask needs to be worn properly over the face. So when uh, we're talking about, when, when I have a mask on, and now I explained to you already how I take it off, I take it off like this, okay? Now, this is a disposable mask. So in a non-COVID era, I would be throwing this out and getting a new mask. Unfortunately, with shortages being what they are, people are reusing their masks. So people ask me a lot, how often can I reuse a mask? It's a good question, very legitimate. Masks can be worn until they get moist or soiled. So if I sneeze into here a lot, you know, more than once maybe, or if there's a lot of humidity in the air and it just gets moist, or this is very common, especially among women, if I wear makeup and the makeup gets on the inside of the mask, the mask does have to be thrown out. You cannot sanitize these masks. You can't spray them with alcohol. You can't spray them with bleach. As soon as they get wet with any of that, it does have to be thrown out because there is um, a layer inside this mask that has a filter and that completely disintegrates when it gets wet. So you gotta throw it out and start over. Another thing is that I generally recommend for people not to wear makeup from below their eyes. So this is for women who like to be made up, no one is actually going to see you below your eyes and it will end up ruining your mask. So um, it took, you know, some um, people that I know wore makeup, wore the mask and had to keep throwing out their mask and frankly, it even smears the makeup and you end up with like a smear um, of lipstick in the wrong place and it's not very attractive. So I tell people, look, wear makeup from here up, but from here down, don't wear makeup. It's not worth it. Literally, no one's going to see you outside of the house. So that's a little tip. Um, so that's uh, something to keep in mind is, you know, a lot of people are decorating this with their kids or painting on them. And again, paint is wet, paint will ruin the filter, and it invalidates the mask. One of the other things that, that people have asked is how do I store this? So if I wanna use it again, how do I store it? So the first thing that you need to know is that the outside of the mask, okay, which is the part that was outside of my face and not against my own face, that's the part that's potentially contaminated. So that part, as soon as I put it down on a surface, well now I have whatever contaminants were on here, on my desk, on my table, wherever it is. So first of all, it's a really good idea to have this stored in a place where you're not going to end up accidentally taking someone else's mask. Secondly, um, you can store it, and I, this is how I like to store it actually, with the good side, the side that's supposed to be against my face, down so that it actually looks like this when I store it. And that way, the contaminated part is not touching 
any surfaces in my house. Another option is to put it in a bag, which means that you could actually fold it from the clean side. The clean side is down right now. And you fold it so that the clean side is on the outside. And then you could put it into a bag and you could then take it out carefully and put it on correctly and then there's no problem. What you don't want to end up doing is putting it on backwards and putting the contaminants smack against your face because that kills it. Another thing I want to talk about are these face shields. Okay, These are really good face shields that are being used by different people. I hope you can hear me. Um, they're using these face shields and there are some advantages and disadvantages to using these face shields. One of the problems with using a face shield is that people think that this is adequate instead of wearing a mask, and that's not true, okay? These face shields need to be worn with masks to be fully effective. The exception is if someone is hearing impaired and is required to read lips or um, speak um, with a hearing, with, you know, if you have hearing impairment, you have to read lips and you also have to uh, speak in specific kinds of ways and therefore this would be a good solution for that. What advantage this has is that it does protect your eyes. We know that eyes are a contaminant and it prevents me from touching my face. Okay, So it does have that advantage. So for healthcare workers, for example, I do think this is a nice idea. I don't think it's needed for everybody. Um, this needs to be worn with a mask. So again, I'm just lifting up my glasses. Now, glasses on their own do provide some protection to your eyes. So obviously, wearing glasses and wearing this face shield is uh, a little bit redundant, but it does give me better coverage. You can see here it comes around, and it does come quite low. And it does increase um, your protection from getting droplets. The other thing is it should be sealed here. There are a lot of these face shields that are being sold that have like fancy glasses attachments and they're kind of shaped like this and it's totally open on the side and that kind of kills the whole point of having one of these. Now the nice thing about having this, sorry, it's, very, it's not very good for hair by the way, just letting you know. Um, it makes a mess of your hair. So the nice thing about this is it's washable. So this could be used many times and the outer area and the inner area can be cleaned with a disinfectant, with bleach, with alcohol. And you do have to keep it clean because it ends up looking kind of gross by the end of the day. Um, this is where you, you would actually be able to see what would have otherwise hit your face. So that's a nice thing. This particular model has a foam, which makes it a little bit more comfortable to, um, to wear. Some of them don't have a foam, but it should have something that molds to the shape of your head. Okay, so that should be worn with a mask, and it's an error for people not to have that with a mask. Now, if you have a cloth mask, cloth masks such as this, this is a cloth mask here, just got it, new technology in Israel. And um, a cloth mask can be washed. So it should be washed um, after you use it. Um, it may not be practical to wash every single time you use it, although that is recommended. Um, but it should be washed. Um, if they have, um, again, this has straps that go in the back of the head. Um, handmade ones can have straps that go behind the ears. It needs to have a way to attach to your head. So if you have a scarf that you tie behind your head, then that's fine. But if you are literally taking a piece of cloth and holding it like this, well, that's not considered a mask. And that's actually not smart because then your, your hand is here. We know that hands spread a lot of illness and disease. So we don't really want to do that. That kills the point. So having a mask like this, which is a cloth mask, gives us the ability um, to reuse a mask safely, to be able to wash it and sanitize it. I advise people who have cloth masks to have multiple ones. People who have 
Paper masks should always have a spare with them in case it gets soiled or wet or whatever. Um, and of course, you always need to have hand sanitizer, at least 70% alcohol. You can see here, 70% alcohol. So we do want to do that. Um, so having a cloth mask is very nice. You have to keep track of the contaminated versus clean side. Um, and you have to wash it frequently. Um, so that's the nice thing about a cloth mask. Cloth masks tend not to have any ability to mold to the nose. So they seal less uh, tightly than a surgical mask. Um, and the problem with that is it's, it's less effective. So we know that surgical masks are the most effective of the disposable masks or the uh, non-medical grade masks. And the cloth masks, depending on how many layers they have, they could be very effective, but not as effective as a surgical mask. So I do recommend a surgical mask if you have the ability to have one. They're a lot less fashionable than some of the nice designs that are out there, but whatever works for you is fine. Wearing a mask is the most important part. So I hope this has been helpful. Um, if you have questions about wearing masks, I'm happy to answer. And I hope everyone stays safe and wear your mask correctly because there's no point in wearing it incorrectly. Take care.